Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world inside Orleans Arena. We got one more game left. Five of them in the books. And it's the enemies getting ready to take on Bivouac. No one does it better. Talk to me. Then we do it. Uh, Brian Custer alongside Jim Jackson. Five games done. The last one here, we've got the enemies. Bivouac, again, a couple of 0-2 teams yep. scrapping for that first win. We just saw what just happened in the last game and how hard it is huh. that those guys will scrap to try to get that one victory. I mean, now somebody's going to walk away with a dub. Yep. It's just a matter of which team can be disciplined enough from the beginning to end to win the game. Again, everybody wants to win, but when you haven't had success yet, gets a little tighter, yep. especially at the end of the game, of making the right plays in order for your team to ultimately win because you want it so bad. But those decisions have to be made at the beginning of the game, through the course of the game, that puts yourself in a situation to ultimately win it. So for both teams, Bivouac and enemies, the little things are the things that are going to count that help you win the game and ultimately get you to that first W. Well, let's talk about these teams, and let's start with the enemies. Uh, because the enemies had the number one pick this year in Isaiah right. Austin. And I'll tell you what, Isaiah Austin has been fantastic for them. He's come in and has played really well for them. Well, I mean, the prototypical big man in today's game. Not being posted up inside, but the ability to not only play defense and block shots, but to beat you off the dribble, to step out and shoot a three-point shot, to dunk the ball inside so you can move him around the court like a chess piece. Swaggy P, he's the captain. Nick Young, Gilbert Arenas has gone from playing to coaching, but Isaiah Austin has been the man for the enemies. The guy they've got to get going, though, is their captain, Nick Young. Just five points so far this season. But you know what? It's an adjustment period when you haven't played in this league because you see it on TV or you come in person. You're like, oh, I can get this done. But the physicality in this league, is something that you have to get used to and accustomed to. It's not like you're just going to walk off, the, you know, from outside and come in this league and automatically dominate. It just doesn't work like that unless you're Joe Johnson, right. who came in physically ready to play coming off a year where he played before. Of course, Gilbert Arenas, the new head coach of the enemies here. And now let's turn our attention to Bivouac. Uh, this is another squad. 0-2, yeah. led by Reggie Theus. He's their head coach, and, you know, they've got an exciting player in Will Bynum and their captain, Josh Smith. Yeah, you know, it's funny because the first week we talked about teams that may be able to knock triplets off, and I picked Bivouac just because of Josh Smith last year. Adding Maurice Spates, someone who had, you know, experience in regards to playing, and, of course, Will Bynum playing at a high level, but yet this team hasn't been able to put it together to be able to track that secret sauce so to speak but this could be a game sometimes you know B you've been around enough it just takes one yep and now you got to get that one before it gets too late where you dug yourself too big of a hole and too big of a gap that you can't get yourself out of so very important for Ben back if they want this game that Josh Smith and Will Bynum really step up early and often we take a look at the roster for Bivouac again Josh Smith the captain Will Bynum he's their co-captain and really powers their offense and then you've got Reggie Theus as the head coach of Bivouac. Here's Reggie. He, of course a player, great player when you played for oh, the Bulls, yep. Sacramento, Sacramento. Yep. and then he even coached Sacramento for a season as well. And now taking his talents to the college and the collegiate level, they're the head coach and athletic director at Bethune Cookman. Uh, it, we had a funny joke was like if he does if he's not successful, he can fire the coach. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is himself. <laughs> Which is himself, but he still got a job. Though. Exactly. Here's the key rules. First team to 50 wins. First team to 25. We go to the half. Again, you got to win by two here in the big three. 14 second shot clock. And again, the four-point shot, which always keep you in the game. Right? We talked about Gilbert Arenas. He's gone from player to coach, and he's now with our John Salad. So, Gilbert, you got to win today. Yes. Uh, these, these enemies back here, is, uh, they're messing up my, my debut of coaching uh, with this 0-2. If they lose this one, I'm trading the whole goddamn team. I'm telling you that. <laughs> well, why, don't, well, why don't you just become the first player coach? They put rules in the contract to stop that. 
Lucky for me, I ain't signed that contract yet. <laughs> so I might I might just have to lay some back up. All right, that's what we need to see, because uh, <laughs> you don't get a W, we got to talk smack about it. Hey, hey, hey trust me, I, I, I get it, I understand. <laughs> Agent Zero, now coaching the enemies. Looking for their first victim. Yeah. The funny part is that you trade the whole night. Brother, you picked the team. Right, bro. So, 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 so you, 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 you can't blame anybody else but you, bro. You, you pick who you got right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's Gilbert Arenas. And then Reggie Theus. Led to UNLV in his college days to their first Final Four appearance. That was back in 1977. He's only just one of eight players to have his jersey retired there at UNLV. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, people forget how good those those UNLV teams were back then, before the Larry Johnson right. and Stacey Altman era. And Reggie was a catalyst to that. And what a great career. My old head, Reggie Theus. I think Reggie's a Compton, California native, too. I think it's Compton or Inglewood, one of those two. And loves to golf. What? Loves to golf. Yeah, but see, sometimes Reggie be having a math problem, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, UNLV wasn't too keen on right. some things sometimes, I think, when it came to mathematics. Well, here's some of the headlines that we've experience today power went to two and one Catino Mobley took a little injury to his thigh as they knocked off the ball hogs hey Tri-State knocked off ghost ballers there ghost balls is another team that was unbeaten Jason Richardson had 22 points and then the triplets they just keep on rolling they remain unbeaten three and oh the only unbeaten team right now in the league as they defeat trilogy 51 to 44. But you, you know what? You know what the thing about that triple team is this one outstanding coaching. And part of that is too that each player understands their roles and they play their role. They don't try to get outside of it. And that's why they're such a difficult team to defend and play against. Here's the drive. Josh Smith. You call that foul. On Nick Young. Josh Smith will go to the line to shoot one for two. These two played week one in that 2019 season. Bivouac, they won the game by seven. Will Bynum was the star of that game. He had 22 in that game. Here's Isaiah Austin. See Elijah Stewart who knocks down the three. Three to our score. Quincy Miller oh, rejected by Stu. Kick out to Josh Smith. Stewart for three. Got it again. Two quick threes by Elijah Stewart. Bynum flips it up and in. He's the leading scorer for Big Black. Averages 16. Swaggy P. Yes. Okay. That's his expertise. Three threes for the enemies. Here's Bynum. Yep. Quick pace here. Like it. Stewart. He'll pull it again. And we'll go to the line as he gets the foul on Bynum. So Elijah Stewart will go to the top of key, top of the key to shoot one for three. See the last minute. Once you lunge like that, 
Got to give the offense a chance to land. Look at Reg. Reg is going to, he's going to bring the fire early. He went to the Taco Bell, bring the fire challenge early. So Elijah Stewart will have to go one on one with Will Bynum. So Elijah Stewart's got 10 seconds. Will Bynum's got to D him up. Stu turns, fires, got it! Count the bucket. And that's a three points for Elijah Stewart. And it's the enemies with the early lead. Thanks to Elijah Stewart. 12 6 our score here in Vegas. Welcome back. It's the big three here on Triller and Fight TV. 12 6 our score. Enemies over bivouac. Now, listen, if you're new to the big three and you wonder what the hell is a bivouac, well, their head coach, Reggie Theus, fills us in. <laughs> A bivouac is a temporary shelter, for all of you who didn't know that. It's an army term. Uh, basically, um, when you dig a foxhole, when you put up a, a small tent or a temporary shelter to sleep, that is called a bivouac. That's our education lesson there from the head coach, Reggie Theus. Now listen, we know Reggie could count shots on the court. Jim Jackson says when he counts shots on the course, it's questionable. He's with John Sally. Okay, I know you as a, a chucker. Meta knew somebody didn't play a lot of defense. <laughs> but these guys are talking that e you even like that on a golf course. Oh, wow. I hit the ball long. <laughs> oh, is that what they yeah, said? I hit the long, and I can, just like free throws, I can putt. Oh, okay. Some people shouldn't understand that. Some people who can't putt. Hey, ask him about his you know what I'm looking at, right? His, he, ask him about that eraser on his pencil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Reggie, I hope you get a win. Oh, you <laughs> <need that>. <laughs> <laughs> Something about a pencil, Red. I'm just saying. That's it. <laughs> Will Bynum <laughs> inbounded for bivouac. He'll pull up. Rolls off. Austin grabs it. Swaggy P for three. It's short. Uh, uh, two guys, when they're on the golf course, he and Eddie Johnson, straight comedy yeah, as far as talking the whole time. I'm sure. Alonzo Gee knocks down that jumper. Four point lead now for the enemies. Stewart. Oh, good drive. And, and Will Bynum rakes. Ball out of bounds. Seven seconds left on the shot clock now. Bynum is beat right there at the end, able to reach in, get a piece of the ball. Gee reaches in on Austin. It's getting physical. Five seconds on the shot clock for the enemies. Austin. Two now. Turns, fires from the baseline. And he'll call that foul on Gee. And that's tough because you got five seconds right there. Being a little bit physical, and I think the official called that. Let's see if he calls it up underneath right there. That's how he, yeah, that's how he walked into it. He really didn't need to because you got, and I know Isaiah also can hit this shot, but he's basically falling away from the basket. 14 8. Bynum, ball on the string, pulls up, got it. Well, Bynum. And for Bivouac, it's just all about, listen, it's the name of this game, scoring points. They have the worst scoring differential in the big three this season. In fact, they scored just 29 points in week two. Well, a lot of it comes from shot selection or poor shot selection that then compromises your defense. So... 
You know, if you want to score the ball better, I know it sounds simple, get better shots. Josh Smith had an open three, thought about it, hesitates, drives. Oh! oh! And breaks the hammer! That's a grown man dunk! Josh Smith, the beast! Oh, my goodness! That's Atlanta Hawks, Josh Smith! Isaiah often misses. The follow's good, though, by Stewart. 16 to 12. So we saw a poster from Frank Nitty. Yeah. On Jason Maxill in the last game. Josh Smith kind of woke everybody up again with that. And now Bynum able to slide by and cut the lead down to two. Let's see if that wakes up Bivouac. First team to 25, we go to the half. Swaggy P for three. Five point lead. Here's Josh for three. Good ball movement, Swaggy again. He thought he got a foul. Well, man, when I said you need to get better shots, you can't get any better than this one right here by Josh Smith. And you tend to forget he's a lefty now. When you jump in the air like that, uh, you know, Stewart, Elijah, he's a lefty. Mm. Mm. That's all you just said. Former, mm. former NBA slam dunk champion. Mm. Remember we put on the Dominique jersey in there at the slam dunk competition? Here's Will Bynum. Okay, Will, the thrill. Three-point lead for the enemies. First team to 25, we go to the half. Jordan Hill has checked in for the enemies. He rolled. Oh, great defense. Good defense. But right to Hill. Knocks down the jumper. He's Come in the game, get a little easy deuce-deuce. Five-point lead. Jermaine Taylor has checked in for Bivouac. He's got the rock now. He'll pull. Too strong. Saved by Bynum. Here's Jordan Hill. Working on Gee. To Perry Jones with three. Got to get it up. Ball away. Air ball. Josh Smith. And Quincy Miller will check in for Bivouac. Nick Young is back in for Elijah Stewart. Here's Taylor. He'll pull it. Too strong. Young. Open three. Yes. Enemies a point away from the half. He said Nick needed to find his offense with knocking in that early first three for him, I think. Ignited him to get that confidence flowing. He's got nine. Yep, all threes. Here's Josh Smith. The drive. Count it. And one. Josh Smith here. That's a tough shot. I mean, to be able to have touch steel to get it up, fall in the way. I know he's going left, but still makes the shot a little difficult. Completes the three point play. Five point lead for the enemies. This bucket, we go to the half. Nick Young for four. That's short. Jordan Hill tracks it down. Fall away. Miller with it. Nearly had it knocked away. And he'll pull up to Taylor. Kick out to Josh. 
Good for three. I mean, everything was good defensively there except the closeout by Jordan Hill kind of gave Josh Smith that open look at the end of the shot clock. Jordan Hill, the drive. And one. Oh. oh. So Jordan Hill will go to the line. They could send this game to the half with a mate. Missed it. Here's Quincy. Kick out Taylor for three. Air ball. Nick open three. Easy money. Oh, he was walking away. Why? He was walking away. He was walking right back towards the bench. <laughs> Here's Josh Smith. He misses the three. And Josh Smith loses it. Nick Young lays it in. And I think Josh Smith pulled something. As we go to the half. Let's see. Yeah, when he when he pushes off Oof, right there. Right there. That right leg. Right, oh, right there. Mm. Oh, right there. You, you know, too, when the players kind of, when they just lose the ball and let it go. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a good sign, though, right here. That he's up. Okay. And no weight at all on that right leg. And it's the enemies with a four-point lead as we go to the half here in Las Vegas. Hey, make sure you follow Big 3 Basketball all across social media. Follow us on Instagram. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Triller, and the YouTube. Final game of the day. Couple of 0 2 squads looking for their first victory, and it's the enemies with a four point lead 26 to 24. Is our score here at the half. Brian Custer alongside Jim Jackson. And you know, for the enemies, you've gotten some balanced scoring here. Nick Young, mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Stewart, both of those guys in double figures. But the key is Nick Young. Yeah, you said it at the top of the show in regards to the game. Nick Young has to find his offense. Yeah. He was open early, able to knock in the three point shot. I think that fueled his confidence not that he needed it but he did need a little boost because he hasn't been playing scoring the ball well and then you get elijah stewart also able to knock in some shots a couple threes hence enemies feeling pretty good about themselves and that's despite you know isaiah austin not really having that impact in the first half which is still in their back pocket if you're the enemies yeah you're right about that elijah stewart was the guy who really got things going yeah. and coming into this game he's their second leading scorer but you can see right off the jump it was a three after three after three for elijah stewart well, and maybe two is the fact too that in the second half isaiah is able to austin able to get into a different rhythm but the beautiful part was he didn't force it yeah because you had elijah playing and knocking down shots and nick young so Isaiah Austin kind of just played the background a little bit, got some offensive rebounds, made some passes. But for enemies to ultimately win, they're going to be needed in the second half. Josh Smith got carried off. And uh, talking about Elijah Stewart, uh, he's with our John Sally. All right, Elijah, what do we got today, man? Uh, just got some good basketball. We're hitting threes right now. Everything is going good. We just got to stop them from shooting so many mid-ranges, and we should be solid. Well, Coach said you guys have to get a win, or he's going to have to suit up. Oh, no, facts. Uh, I hate losing. Um, apparently, I'm not doing enough. One of the workers here asked me who I was, so I've been playing for like two weeks now, so I kind of took offense to that, so I'm going hard now. Okay, let's get it done. Sure, thank you. Hey, hey John, you know that's bad when the workers say, who are you, man? Yeah, hey, hey grab that broom and come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah Stewart, one of the leading scorers with 11. Hey, bro, don't feel bad. I walk in a bunch of places. They're like, man, we're, 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 Come yeah, on, bro. man. Dude, stop. 
What you doing? Get out of here. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Here's the second half. Here's Stewart now. Four. That three is short. Good tap, though. Hill couldn't control that pass. <laughs> And there's a kick. Jordan Hill picked him up with two feet in between his ankles right there. <laughs> Trying to do whatever you can to get that ball. Bro, I'm telling you, when you, when you got, and when you're undefeated, I mean undefeated, when you're 0-2 and you need a dub, you're trying to do any and everything to, get, to uh, preserve possessions and get some shots and get some buckets, man. Quincy Miller, that shot short. Yeah, you don't want to be the only team or the second like only two teams in the league with no dub yep here's Perry Jones Got it. Listen, you talked about it. You know, the loser of this game, it would be just two teams left at Ofer. Yeah. Jones clears it. Stewart Ooh. thought about that four. Gets the screen and pulls up from 15. Got it. Righteous. Eight point lead for the enemies. First team to 50 wins. Mike Taylor. Good drop off to Miller. Extra pass to Bynum for three. Short. But Miller lays it in. Stu for three. Off. Tried to chase it down. I just started getting back, kind of snaking his way. That's what it's called in with this dribble off the pick and roll to his right hand for a pull up. You see Chris Paul, who did that a lot during his career, in particular during the finals against the Bucks in game one and two, where he was real successful with that. Oh, Mike Taylor returned the sender. Welcome back, JT. That was Here's Jordan Hill. Five on the shot clock. Perry Jones with two. Shot clock violation. How about the second half? Isaiah Austin. Gilbert chose to kind of go with the lineup at the, at the end of the half that had a little momentum. Now, Swaggy P is not in there because he was in that lineup to close out the half. So, a little probably strategy behind why Gilbert Arenas wanted to start this lineup here. Good move by Mike Taylor. Good minute. Put it back up. Put it back up. Uh, Jordan Hill should have put it back up. Missed everything. Here's Stewart. He misses. Well, the, nah, now he ended up getting it back, but you gave up the layup for a three. Luckily, you got an offensive rebound. And lead is 10. Biggest lead for the enemies. And put it back up. Put it up. There you go. Now it's 12. Enemies are rolling. And we, we talked about the point differential for Bivouac. They scored just 29 points in the second week of this season. That's been their Achilles heel, just scoring points, especially in the second half. Bynum, and they're just, at some point, you just got to drive the bucket, bucket at some point. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, move the ball, cut, back door. I mean, again, three on three. It's ways you can get a lot of easy and open shots if, if you really set your offense and move it. But if you just want to settle, well, then, you know, you're going to shoot a bad percentage. You're not going to get a, 
quality looks and hence you're going to end up being on two with the possibility of being over three yeah the mathematics are real simple bro they don't lie there you go it's miller he drives and lays that one in cut the lead to 10. Pull up. Isaiah Hall, that's off. Here's Miller again for three. Isaiah Austin, you got to go get that. He's yeah. looking for Elijah Stewart to get it, and then Will Bonham able to sneak in there. Bynum, got it. <laughs> Nick Young, two dribble pull up. Austin tips it to himself. The follow, oh. and he'll go to the line. So Isaiah Austin, who been leading the enemies in scoring at nearly 20 a game, around 19. He only got four. But his team up double figures. Both these squads looking for their first win. It's the big three here on Triller and Fight TV. In Las Vegas, last game of the evening. Enemies, bivouac, and it's the enemies with a 10 point lead as these two teams battle it out. Both looking for their first win of the season. Gilbert Arenas talking with Elijah Stewart. He's the leading scorer, he's got 13. John Sally's been a long day here yes, so man. far, man. Give me your thoughts, man, of, of what you've seen so far today and, and your impressions of the season here, the big three. Well, it's way more intense than it looks like on television up front. And uh, I don't ever believe I did this. I cannot believe I ran, jumped, dumped. <laughs> um, this is really hard work. Could you think as soon as you left the league, would this be something that you would have done? Um, yes. I would I would have played here just to get some more dunks on people and and you get to react with the crowd and there's not as much pressure but it is as intense. Yeah, we certainly saw that a couple of games ago. Oh yeah. I think John you, you see it too. I think a lot of players and you said it. On TV it looks one way and players former players see it but when they get in the action and they haven't prepared their mind see Perry Jones with the basket. It's way more physical and taxing. You think three on three, but you have so much more real estate to cover than you do when you're playing five on five. Oh yeah, and another thing is, um, my leg was shaking. Like telling my my left leg was telling my body we can do it, and the rest of my body boycotted the <laughs> my left leg. So my left leg is limping on its own. <laughs> There's no way. Just look at Bynum. Like it, this kid went to Georgia Tech. Uh, he was born the year after I got to Georgia Tech, and he's still playing. 38 years old, putting it in like it's the easiest thing in the world. Uh, you know, but the, I think I think that's too with like when I when I was done playing, I was done. Yeah, yeah, you know, I didn't even think about hooping. You know, but a lot of these players, you see Perry, they didn't clear. I guess a lot of players continue to look at Catino. They continue to play in different leagues and keep themselves in shape enough so when they come out here, the transition isn't as difficult as if you just put your shoes up and the ball down. Yeah, I think uh, just watching Josh Smith go up and dunk left-handed like that again, almost looking in the rim, and then look like he blew out his Achilles. That's yeah, probably his last dunk. But at least he, uh, at least he, he had a good one. Yeah. yeah. Here's Nick Young. Misses that three. Nick is back to missing. <laughs> <laughs> At least that had to check. <laughs> 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 He's consistent. Yeah, He's absolutely. Consistent. 
10 point lead for the enemies. <laughs> and they call it timeout. <laughs> As Gilbert Arenas looked up at Swaggy. He said, Come on, man, make a shot. <laughs> I, I love John that he told you if they don't win I'm a trade the whole damn team and as Jim pointed out he's the one who chose the team <laughs> he's gonna fire his general manager too. everybody's job safe is I mean it is it's on the line except his <laughs> And normally it's always the coach that gets the, 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 the uh, rougher end of that stick. Ain't that right, John? Yeah. And let me tell you, I, I sit around and I, and I watch Gilbert really. Like, I'm watching him. He is, I, I don't think he had the respect he has for his coaches now. Right. Once you once you become a coach and have to deal with all these different personalities, yeah. you have a different respect for the yep. game and the, and the people with you. Yep. And how to manage those egos, minutes, to be able to get guys to perform at a high level just because you have a plan how you implement that with the, the the roster you have is so important you know and how you communicate to each player is so different yeah especially when you are a top player yeah yeah, yeah. you expect players to play like you that's what i always said about michael jordan he, he wanted everybody to play like him but he was the only only michael there was mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think you see four seconds on the shot clock. I think that's why it's a beautiful play that time by Lonzo He. A lot of the more successful coaches in the league, majority of them have been role players. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because they can kind of understand what guys have gone through, gone through, been through, and how to communicate that because, see, Austin inside, they weren't the main guys. So they had to figure out other ways to be successful to contribute to a team not being the superstar. Well, I always played well in the playoffs because I knew it was Mark Hamill. <laughs> 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 I was setting up my next job. Yeah, there you go. Amen to that. There you go. And hey, you made sure you got yourself some interviews, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Every time the egos came, I ain't talking to that reporter. Yeah, yeah. Come over here. Come on. <laughs> You want a sound bite? <laughs> Let me tell you what he said in the locker room. <laughs> Stolen by Jones. Jumper rolls in. And the enemies are four points away from their first victory. And they are pouring it on. Bivouac, just 32 points. Now, this can either be a long four points or a short four points. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Before, to get this done. Seriously. You're right. Because right now, Bivouac is like tired. Mm -hmm. Do they have the fight in them? Now, that's up to you if you're the enemy to go ahead and take, your t I mean, take care of your business when you're supposed to, which is get a stop now, get another basket, really deflate the mind and ego of your opponent. And you can tell, look, they, they're, they're acting like they just won the championship. <laughs> 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 it is the Vex Elixir is winning. Oh, yeah. Now the best elixir is a nice cigar, bro. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear oh you. yeah, I don't want to talk to you about those cigars. Um, I'm going to bring some Padron anniversary. Oh, I love it. Oh, no, 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 but which one? The 64s or the 26? What are we doing? Uh, 64. Okay. Just mine. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> oh, just, <laughs> just oh, that's all right. I got a box full. I got a box full of cigars in the room and some in my bag here. <laughs> oh no! Before oh, the thing you won the game. Oh, Perry Jones. That's part of the night. You said, was it going to be a long or a short one? <laughs> it's short. <laughs> the enemies get their first win and do it in style. Thank you very much, Perry. Jones from four. That's how you wrap up the night. Perry, the leading scorer. And the enemies get their first win. And Gilbert Arenas as well. Well, you know what? The good thing is a lot of players' jobs are safe right now. <laughs> right. On the enemies right now because of that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, you got to uh, ask him, John. A lot of players' jobs are safe now. They got that W. Yeah, you're right. <laughs>
Yeah, I, and you know what? I'm sitting around and I see the champagne being rushed into the locker room. You guys just won a, a championship with your first win. No, nah, man, we just out here having a good time and just hooping, man. Just out here playing basketball like we know how. And uh, we got dub at the end of the day. So you're telling me that the coach didn't say if we win, you get extra? <laughs> of course he did, man. That's it. You know, got push up his sleeve. But I told him at the end, I was going to hit this four-pointer per game. He said, go ahead. So that's what, that's what we ended up with. Good. He might let you drive him today. He might. Right. Have a good one. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> What a shot by Perry Jones and hey enemies they've got a win and bivouac and aliens now the only teams winless and the triplets the defending champions the only unbeaten team in the big three at three and oh so that's the end of this one the enemies with the victory big three is headed to Dallas next Saturday on CBS 3 p.m. Eastern Triple header of action for Jim Jackson. I'm Brian Custer. Thanks for watching.